This right here is my very first laser engraver, and today I'm going to share with you the roadmap that I would use if I could start learning laser engraving all over from scratch. But before we get into the roadmap, you might want to know what this is all based on. I got that laser in December of 2022, and I really dove into laser engraving feet first. And just seven months after we got the machine, my wife and I hit our first $5,000 in revenue month in laser sales. And today we've now built and shipped a little bit over 500 individual laser cut or laser engraved products. And we're up to three and a half lasers in our shop, including two diode lasers and a new CO2 unit. And the half is for an extra diode laser module. And I share these details just so that you know where I'm coming from, because of course online you'll find people that know both more and also less than I do on these topics. And so at least this way you'll be able to frame the roadmap I'm about to share using this bit of context. But with that all said, let's go ahead and jump into the first of the five steps in this roadmap, and that is going to be learning about materials. So for this one, you're gonna to have to answer a few different questions, like what do you actually wanna work with? What types of projects do you wanna make? And also importantly, what materials are actually laser safe. There's a lot to this actually, and that's why I have a full video coming up about dangerous versus safe laser materials that I'm gonna be publishing in this series. And by the way, this is actually the first video in a full six video series that I'm publishing here on YouTube. It's basically a free laser engraving mini course, and I'm gonna have a playlist on my channel that has all of the videos in it, and I'll direct you to that at the end of this video you're watching right now. But for now, I'm gonna get you started by just sharing my three favorite laser engraving materials for beginners. Number one is plywood, and this is a staple for a ton of laser projects, and I personally like to buy mine from Columbia Forest Products Pure Bond Plywood Line, which you can buy from Home Depot's website of all places. You can buy these in pre-cut panels that are specifically sized for a lot of laser engravers, and you can also buy them in large sheet, and they'll do a free custom cut if you fill out a form with the details of the sizing that you want. Number two is slate, and this is a personal favorite of mine, especially for photo engraving, because I like the detail of how well it engraves, and I personally just buy this off of Amazon. Number three is acrylic, and this is another great one. Just keep in mind that if you have a diode laser, that you're only gonna be able to work with certain opaque or dark colors, like black works pretty well. But on the other hand, if you have a CO2 laser, you can do pretty much any color. You can do clear, you can do translucent colors, and a lot of other stuff. And my three favorite suppliers for acrylic are Houston Acrylics, Custom Made Better, and also Craft Closet. And once you have an idea of the materials that you wanna work with, then the next step is a fun one, and that is actually choosing the laser machine that you're gonna buy if you haven't bought one already. This is a huge topic, and I will have a deep dive video on this coming up later in the series, but for now, I'll just give you a quick little primer. There are three main types of lasers available to consumers today, and they are diode lasers, CO2 lasers, and fiber or galvo lasers. But within each type of laser, there are several different tiers of different prices and features, and if you add this all up, it can make the choosing process a little bit overwhelming. But for the majority of beginners who are buying their first laser engraver, I would recommend that you focus your attention here, which is on enclosed diode lasers, and examples of this would include the X-Tool S1 or the Raleigh Lasermatic 2, and there are four main reasons why I think this is a good starting point for a lot of beginners. Number one, diode lasers are the cheapest type of laser on the market, and number two, they can do the majority of popular laser projects like tumblers, engraving coasters, doing plywood cutouts, or engraving on wood. Number three, the enclosed versions of these diode lasers are safer and easier to get set up and going with compared to the cheaper open frame models. And I also think that this is a great entry point into the world of laser engraving because most of the skills that you'll learn on a diode laser like this are also gonna be transferable to other types of machines that you might pick up in the future. With that said, I know everybody has different situations and so there are of course exceptions to this general recommendation. For example, if you're looking to do a lot of acrylic or glass work on your laser, then you're probably gonna be happier with something like an entry-level desktop CO2 laser like the Omtech Polar or the X-Tool P2. But even after you've got your laser, your setup is not complete because you're probably also going to want to add a few additional tools. So step number three is to upgrade your laser shop. And I will again have a deep dive video that goes into this in more detail, but for now I'm going to just share three different upgrades that you can make to your laser setup that I think a lot of people will find useful. Number one is an air compressor for your air assist. And if you haven't heard of this before, an air assist is basically just a jet of air that comes out the nozzle of your laser to blast away debris and give you cleaner cuts and also to prevent some fire risk and also to help with preventing scorching. This is a really important laser accessory and some more premium prosumer lasers will come with everything you need right in the box, but a lot of cheaper and desktop units either don't come with an air compressor for this at all or come with one that is significantly underpowered. For example, this little air compressor you see here is the very first one that I got for my setup, and it is rated at only five PSI, which is way underpowered in my experience. And so now I use this much larger and much more powerful California Air Tools air compressor, and I'm usually running this one at anywhere from 25 to 35 PSI, which gives me way cleaner cuts, 
much less scorching and better performance overall. Number two is an exhaust system. And bottom line, laser engravers produce fumes and smoke, and so you need to deal with them in some way. And again, this is something that not every laser is going to come with, so you might have to set it up on your own separately after buying your laser machine. And as I see it, there are three basic configurations for an exhaust system. The first one is to vent outside either through a window or a wall, or maybe through a roof and to pull all of the fumes out with an inline fan sort of like this one here and you also are going to need ducting to go along with this sort of setup like you see i have in my shop right here number two is to vent inside but to use a fume extractor which is basically going to filter out the smoke and fumes this is one here that i'm experimenting with but this is something that you really have to be careful with because you want to make sure that if you're going to vent inside that you're going to be really careful and know that you have a machine that's gonna keep the air quality healthy for you when you're working in there. Setup number three is basically a combination of both one and two. And basically what you would do is vent outside, but first run these smoke and fumes through a fume extractor or air purifier. And this is the one that is personally pretty appealing to me because I live in a neighborhood with a lot of neighbors close by. And so I wanna try this out to see if it improves my system. And I haven't fully gotten through it yet, but this is sort of the one that I'm working on at the moment. The third laser shop upgrade is this 3M adhesive here. This is basically a double-sided adhesive that is laser are safe and so what you do is you kind of put it on the back of material cut it out and then you can just peel off that backing and just stick whatever you cut out directly on another layer and this is really useful for me because I do a lot of, of multi-layered wooden projects sort of like this sign that you see here and by the way this sign is actually the project that is part of the Lightburn 101 tutorial that I have coming up in this series but anyway it just makes that the, the um, adhesion process way quicker and easier for doing these sorts of projects. And there do seem to be multiple versions of this type of product available, and so if you're interested in seeing the one that I use, I'll put a link to it in the description below. Step number four on our roadmap is to learn laser software. Now there are a few different options available on the market, and it does depend a little bit on the laser that you buy, but the big one that most people are talking about and a lot of people are using is called Lightburn. There are an incredible number of things that you can do in Lightburn, and when you first get into the software, it can be a bit overwhelming. You'll need to learn things like what the different areas are, or what I call the five zones of Lightburn. You'll need to learn how to navigate inside of the space, which can actually be a little bit tricky. You also need to learn things like coordinates and framing, how to do power and speed tests, and how to set up your layers. But the good news is you can learn all of the basics that you need in order to create a simple project like this this one I mentioned earlier in just about an hour or two. In fact, the Lightburn tutorial I have coming up in this series is actually going to show you exactly how I made this and all of the tools and skills that you need in order to create this design. And the fifth and final step of our roadmap here is to solve laser scorching. Another way of thinking about this is to call it optimizing your cuts and engravings. And long story short, that's how you make adjustments in the software and also with your hardware to go from sloppy results like this to perfectly clean cuts and engravings like that. And more specifically, there's what I call the four ingredients to perfectly clean cuts and engravings, and they are your airflow, air assist, power and speed settings, and also the focus of your laser. Understanding this is one of the most valuable and also one of the most overlooked parts of laser engraving, and it'll be the focus of the final deep dive video in the series. Speaking of which, here is the link to the full playlist that's going to contain all of the different videos for this laser engraving mini course. So you can click or tap on that and it'll take you to the full thing. If you're watching this in the present, the videos in there will be published over the next few weeks. And if you're watching this in the future, everything might be there for you right now. But either way, thanks for watching and I'll hopefully see you in the other videos. Bye now.